So here it is, uh, the final CNC, and this is the 18 by 24 inch uh, version. This is going to be the all-in-one kit. Um, so this is the final, final. You know I'm lying when I say that. Uh, design. So, you know, originally, I won't go on and on about this. I just want to show you the vacuum table. But originally, uh, I wanted it to look different uh, just to kind of distinguish itself. But as I progressed, you know, it looked different just because of the needs I had with the hardware I chose to use. And then I did some funky, you know, it's the other one we built is over there, it has those funky kind of cut ins on the side. Turned out that was a bad idea. And, uh, you know, kind of that homogenous <laughs> CNC, you know, desktop CNC look is actually okay because it's functional. So uh, I changed these sides. I don't know what you can see, but uh, I wanted to show you this. Where'd Dave go? Oh, it's very good. that's what you can see. Oh, well, that's pretty good. All right. So, um, couple of things that we added is can you see this yeah over here is just a project box off of Amazon we've got it uh, Mark actually uh, did a jig <clears throat> the first one that we built is being used to build the other ones and it did the CNC on this box so we've got little uh, CNC pathing um, I think we might be drilling some of these holes by hand is that true or do you have all of them CNC some of them Okay, some of them. Uh, but anyway, it's nice so we can order some more of these boxes, put it in a jig, and uh, you know do, do some uh, rework on these simple boxes. But we got these nice standoffs, they're metal, very sturdy now. Uh, we minimized the amount of E-chain by uh, putting it right off to the side. So it does move. So if you want to hit that E-stop, which isn't really an E-stop, it's just like an off switch, basically. <laughs> Um, is that all wired up yet? I don't know if we've done yeah. that. Right? Yeah, it's wired up. So, so it's just an on and off switch. Basically. Yeah, okay. it's just an on and off switch. But if you have, uh, you know, for safety measures, if something's going wrong, you're going to lose your cut anyway. Um, but just boom, hit that E stop. So anyway, we uh, are going to analyze this, um, this uh, fan shroud. Or fan shroud. Wrong. Uh, the vacuum shroud. Uh, we've got we, we've got this design so it can be done in one print so it's easy for people to print. Uh, we are going to ship this with you know it's an all-in-one kit so it'll ship with this. And we we're trying to find the right vinyl, clear vinyl uh, that will actually clamp into a two-part piece. Go to the bottom, you'll kind of be able to see through it um, to kind of see what's going on underneath, but it'll keep the dust down and the uh, vacuum, so you'll need two shop vacs. Uh, the vacuum just pulls away most of the dust. Uh, this is also done in the jig that we built, and eventually these will actually go out to my regular CNC. But it's been fun to kind of learn the learn the uh, intricacies of holding the, the material properly, so that you get a fairly good uh, result. You know, not a lot of chatter. Uh, but Mark did a good uh, good job. Keep in mind, uh, Mark's not a CNC expert. I'm forcing him to learn this stuff. And since he's smart, he's doing a good job. So uh, this, can you see this surface pretty good? <laughs> You'll notice the, the coloration difference. So it's not yet performing like I want it to perform. Uh, since this part is optional, um, we're still gonna release it, uh, even if I'm not totally happy with this. For one, uh, this is just, for one thing, this is a waste board that's really too big. It's, you know, this is cheap stuff, this MDF. And yeah, it has what? At least a six inch, uh, probably seven inch, six or seven inches on the sides and back. That's technically waste, but for one, it looks good. For two, if you wanna uh, use the sides to clamp things down, if you're using screws or whatever. Um, yeah, it's too big, but this is the way I wanted it. You can do whatever you want. But um, what I really wanted was a vacuum table that people could opt to cut themselves. So this was actually just bolted down and we made sure we had enough reach 
on this. Oh, I can't push it, but um, you know, so this goes down far enough to actually route its own vacuum table. So we uh, did this grid, we'll release these files. You can do it yourself if you want. Um, and we were testing this as vacuum table. Well, the idea of a vacuum table is actually to take, so this never gets destroyed, <laughs> ideally. Then you put your waste board on top. This does get destroyed and you can actually fly cut this, which just means you get this expensive bit and it makes all of this completely smooth and flat so that your material, like imagine this, then your material can go on top and when you're done, yeah, you'll get some nicks in the, the waste board, um, but the vacuum table is supposed to hold this material down, but we're not getting the, first of all, we're using a smaller shop vac, we're not getting the this MDF stuff is porous, believe it or not, and it does pull air through it. We proved it on the crawl bot, but that was over a very, very large surface area. And so I think we might be down to the size where, eh, who knows if this vacuum table idea is really gonna work with the shop back. But uh, what is cool about this still is uh, we're gonna do um, some light production with these machines, and we're gonna have to make jigs that you can quickly remove and switch out. So you can still use this um, as a vacuum table if it's to your advantage in the projects that you're doing to have this uh, waste board operate as uh, you know something that you bolt to and have different jigs. So you could have this all set up for one project you're doing for Etsy or whatever. Um, you know maybe it's four stations. Uh, for jigs for material clamps or whatever and then you could save this kind of like in screen printing um, where you save the screen uh, You know, maybe you want to do that t-shirt later So if you want to do that project later, you'd be able to make some smaller jigs and stuff. You could have a jig uh, Sorry, you could have a you know a jig that that sucks down to the, with a, this vacuum table for a big clamp that you wouldn't use that all the time. So you could have one that's just like this and you can screw things down to. You could have another one with a different style of hold down or maybe uh, there's a two operation uh, project. And so you have to do two little clamps to turn the, the work or whatever. But anyway, this is what's cool about this. I'll do the quick demo and then that'll be pretty much it. So the, the shop vac has a 3D printed part. It's a small shop vac, I'll turn it on. So, on a regular shop vac, it doesn't feel like it's pulling very hard, but watch this. You heard the, the shop vac like, go up, and let me tell you. I cannot pry that. I cannot move that at all. So this would be strong enough to, to actually have a clamp. A big old clamp does not move at all. Very, very cool. You cannot get that to move. There it goes. <laughs> so uh, over that surface area, it's great to hold this down, but for whatever reason, it's not pulling through. So one thing we tried, we read on some forums, that if you uh, coat, we used a, a sealer to actually coat all of the inside of this. Um, maybe we need to do some more uh, sprays. We did like two coats, um, but maybe we can get the performance out of this so that it does pull enough air through that top MDF to truly have a waste board that's ex expendable and uh, it will also hold down the material. But anyway. So that's, that's the vacuum table atta uh, attachment. We'll still uh, work on this a little bit and bring it to Maker Faire to show people. Still have to add my camera. Still have to, is the Raspberry Pi in here? It is in there. The Raspberry Pi's in there, uh, but I don't, have you run it off that yet? No. No. So we'll have to test that to make sure that works. Use my little dial and keypad. And that's, that's all the attachments I want. So anyway, that's a little demo of the CNC. I don't know if you can answer this question. Yeah, question. Can you show the deflection directly on the bit 
deflection. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what that means. That would be interesting despite looking like it's not going anywhere. Can you show the deflection directly on the disc? Well, uh, so yeah, this is uh, the just, come well, on, wait, do we have a bit in here? Yeah. I don't know if you, you, you'll be able to see it though. Can I pull this off? I, can, I think I, it's loose enough. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to hold this bit. You can zoom in here. If uh, the, I think the guy asking this question is uh, setting himself up to be disappointed <laughs> because this is clearly um, I pretty pretty ideal for wood projects, uh, MDF and the like. Um, metal, uh, we did get some chatter. Although, is this the second one you've done? No, this is the first one. This is the first one. Okay. Uh, as I look at it today, did you sand it? No. I mean, it looks pretty dang good. That's without a finishing pass, too. Oh, okay. We didn't even use, good. we did rough cut, or yeah, what is it's it called? Yeah, just a straight. Yeah. So we we don't even know yet how to, to do this for, like, super awesome finish. We're becoming CNC guys. That's one of the fun things about uh, doing this is uh, you're gonna, I'm going to learn with you. But anyway, so um, I guess it's not a surprise that a CEO doesn't know what he's talking about, about his products. <laughs> Sometimes that's true, but all I'm saying is uh, there's a, there's what's called a stack up of tolerances when you use these Delrin wheels. Um, with this beefy hardware we got, it's not too bad, but we're doing a version of this with linear rail, not a version, but you can you'll be able to add on to this uh, linear rails and sorry, add on to this linear rails, and we're not going to do ball screw. We're going to do. Um, Acme rod with anti backlash nuts because it's so much more economical. And if I had ball screws and the big motors to power them, I really think we've overshot our target of the middle uh, of the price range uh, maker, which is the target for this. So if you're a pro, this may not be for you, but here it is. So I'm pulling pretty dang hard to where I start to get worried that I'm going to break something. How do I hold this in place? Can you, um, oh, go all the way to the back? Okay, there you go. Just hold it in place. I mean, I'm, pull, I'm pulling hard. I don't want to break that, it's sharp too. And I'm putting several pounds of pressure on that. I actually don't see it moving. Okay, it's moving slightly. Maybe something to provide scale. I don't know how to. I want to. I want to try to hold something like right there. Oh, here we go. I mean that. I have my eye on a dot on this tape roll. That's really impressively. I mean, it's tight. I can. I can see. Like a millimeter. But you really got to pull hard on it. I would. I, I was probably using more force than the motors themselves could even do. So um, the deflection is not bad. Now, if you grab this, I can. I can pry it to to move and twist just a little bit. But the force is on the machine. Pretty good. Uh, I'm actually impressed. This. Why is this better than that one? I, maybe it was all of this, uh, the flex that we were getting possible, out possible of these. It's just better tension, better build. Yeah, yeah. We paid special attention when we put this together. Uh, you know, we've actually used it. So uh, I'll tell you that the cuts on this look phenomenal. I've seen really crappy CNCs. Uh, I don't want to mention anyone in Venables. But, uh, whoa, <laughs> anyway, uh, the, this is beefy, man. It's pretty good. Any other questions? Uh, you answered what they were looking for. Cool, all right. Well, uh, thanks guys uh, for being a part of our impromptu uh, video. So you guys are awesome. Have a good weekend.